Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to our channel. And today we are gonna be checking out Seed Studios Odyssey X86 as a router. So let's get started. Before we begin, I do wanna thank Seed Studio for sending me over this board. And if you do wanna see a full review and benchmarks of this guy comparing to other boards similar to this, I will leave a little card up on the top left and down in the description below. Also keep in mind, everything we talk about will also be down there as well. Now, one of the first things that I wanted to do with this board when I received it was turn it into a router. That's because it has so many connections to it. It has dual gigabit ethernet, SIM card slot, M.2, your ability to install a hard drive with it with the SATA cable and much more like I said watch a review I have all that stuff up there and at the press point that it's set at it's very very reasonable compared to all the other stuff that's really out there like gaming routers and as well as commercial routers so the base model of this guy is $188 without the EMMC and if you do want to get the 64 gigabyte EMMC it's $218 it also includes an Intel Celeron which I'll leave the model number here and 8 gigs of RAM more than enough to actually do whatever you want and to two M.2 slots for expandability. Now, if you're gonna compare this to like, say some gaming routers that are out there, I've seen some that are 199, 299, and you can't do half as much as this guy can do if you install a firewall firmware in here. As well as commercial grade stuff like Sonic Walls. I mean, this is half the price of a Sonic Wall and it could do more. That's, I'm just saying, like this is a really good price if you're gonna turn this guy into a router. Now you're gonna say, hey, it doesn't have as much antennas as gaming routers. To be honest, if you're gaming, you really should be plugging directly into your router, not using wireless. Just, just a thought. Moving on, today we will be checking a couple of firewalls for this guy, and I'm gonna highlight most of the stuff that has to regard with the firewall and the Odyssey. So if you wanna see a list of the abilities that firewalls can do, I'll leave a link down in the description to all the firewalls that we're talking about. Uh, should I put a firewall counter every time I say firewall? Anyway, let's get started. So as I was editing the video, I realized that I didn't answer the question of why you wanna use a custom firewall. And I can't answer for everyone because everybody's situation is different, but I could tell you what I use my custom firewall for. Now, mainly I need the ability to control every aspect of my network as far as like IP assigning, DNS, and all that other stuff. So the custom firewall allows me to do that. Using like some consumer grade stuff that you would buy off the shelf for like a $50 Linksys or something like that, they don't have this ability that I would want to use it for. And recently my router broke, the one that I actually have DDWRT installed in. So I'm using like a consumer grade one for like $100. And that only allows me to assign 10 MAC addresses. So hear me out. So my home network, I usually have about anywhere between 30 to 40 devices. And you might think like, how are you getting so many? Well, I have IoT, I have TV devices, I have Google Chrome, I have all this other stuff that needs their own IP. So just like light switches alone, that's like 10, you know? So each one, I wanna be able to assign their own IP address. This way it won't conflict with others, as well as Google Chromes and also like Google Homes and all that other stuff that I have in the house. All right, here's how I assign my stuff. Basically anywhere from two to 50, that's my VPNs. Anybody who signs into my VPN, or if I sign into my VPNs, I know I got a low range of IP addresses. That's for my VPN. Anywhere from 50 to 100 is all my IoT devices. So light switches, Google Chrome, stuff like that. That's all within the 50 to 100 range. Anything, anything from 100 to 150, that's all my desktop stuff. Like this guy, uh, I have my uh, work desktop, I have another desktop in the living room, stuff like that. And that's all my desktop IP addresses. And since I have a lot of VMs, that also falls in that category as well. And then once I jump into the 150 to 200 range, that's all my wireless devices. And then 200 and on is all my server devices and I pop in a printer all the way at the last IP. But just that alone, I would have to take the MAC address and then I'm able to assign the IP address. Now, I know you can assign static IPs on your desktop, like in Windows 10, you could just add your IP in there, but that's not always the best way. You should always let your DHCP assign the IP address. And this way you don't have to worry about configuring it every time. Or if you got a laptop device and you want a static IP, your firewall will be able to do that and assign it for you. I also have more rules and everything in place. Like, you know, the Steam cache that I have, basically I don't do anything through my PC, my firewall handles all the DNS queries. And then if it knows it's gonna to go to like content1.steampower.com, my firewall will automatically send that traffic to my NAS instead of having it to send the public. So it's like a lot of stuff I do, my firewall handles. So that's mainly what I would use it for. There's also like a lot of security issues that I deal with as well. Also like wireless devices that connect to my network, they're all within that certain block of IP addresses that don't have internal access to my other parts of the network. It's, it's just that basically. That's the main reason why I would run a custom firewall just to 
shape everything that I need. There's also like quality of service, stuff like that. So hope this kind of explains why you want to use a custom firewall instead of using a consumer grade version. It's just because you have more control of everything in your network. So back to the video. To begin, we have PFSense. Uh, that probably needs no introduction. It's probably top of the list for everyone who's thinking about firewall. PFSense is one of my favorite firewalls to use with this guy and the installation was super easy. Now keep in mind that this guy only supports UEFI. So there's a lot of firewalls that I wasn't able to even install because it requires legacy BIOS. As far as PFSense in this guy, everything does work except for the Wi-Fi. Now keep in mind that PFSense is on FreeBSD and FreeBSD is very, very picky about drivers. So if you want wireless to work, you might have to get one of these M.2 to PCIe cards to buy a supported PCIe card or a wireless card that this guy would support. You should be able to plug it into these M.2 slots. The onboard Intel Wi-Fi is a 9000 series. I think it's 9560, 9560 or 9570. One of those. I'll leave it right here once I double check on that. As of right now, uh, they just embedded the code for that driver for FreeBSD 13. And the current version of FreeBSD is 12. And I did see some tutorials while researching this that you could install the driver for FreeBSD 12. Unfortunately, for PFSense, we are still on FreeBSD 11. So unless they upgrade to 12 and we still have to manually compile the drivers, we're not gonna be seeing support for the Intel drivers for this guy. To be honest, when I install a PFSense, in most cases, I use an external AP anyway, access point. Uh, like Ubiquity. So that's just something I do. So in most cases, I wouldn't even use a Wi-Fi card inside the PFSense installations uh, when I have to build this for clients. Otherwise, everything does work. Um, when you're using IDS slash IPS, the CPU doesn't even sweat. I'm telling you, this guy can handle it easily. Moving on, the next firewall that I checked out with this guy was OpenSense. Now, OpenSense is one of my top, top favorite firewall operating systems to install. One of which is because it has a very clean user interface, which is something they took from Monowall. And OpenSense is a fork of PFSense. So you're getting all the benefits of PFSense, but the better UI, you could say. Now, why I say it's a better UI, most of the time when I deploy firewalls to clients, I would rather install OpenSense over uh, PFSense due to the fact that it's less intimidating on the GUI. And if I really needed them to configure something, they're less intimidating on the UI. It actually looks similar to um, a sonic wall, you could say, as far as the user interface goes. On top of that, Open Wall has a newer plugin system, you could say, and I was able to actually get WireGuard working using OpenSense versus PFSense. Again, it is on the same platform, so it's on FreeBSD 11.2, so you're not gonna have wireless drivers working for the onboard wireless card. Otherwise, it functions just like PFSense. IPS, IDS works perfectly fine. Virus scans working perfectly fine. And the configurability, to me, I like the user interface a little bit better, and there is a dark mode that actually looks pretty good. Now, the next firewall that I also checked out was IP Fire. And if you're gonna install a firewall for the Odyssey, I would suggest IP Fire. It is a little bit harder to configure because you have to understand what red, green, and blue ports are and all that other stuff. And it's a little bit hard to understand the web user interface, but once you get everything set up and dialed in, it's a really good firewall, especially it supports the built-in card. So you were actually able to use the Intel wireless card that's built into this guy along with all the speeds that it supports. So it's a win-win for everything. Not only you get the virus scan, the IPS, IDS, the firewall itself, uh, caching, whatever you want to do on these previous firewalls like PFSense and OpenSense, you get all that and also the wireless card. So if you're going to be using this for your home installation and stuff like that, it just works. You don't have to purchase anything extra. Last but not least that I checked out was Clear OS, and that was terrible. I don't even know what to say about it. I'm sorry, but I've installed Clear OS, and as soon as you install it, not only does it take 10 plus gigs to store onto your drive, it takes forever to boot up, nothing works. I mean, the wireless card doesn't work for it and it's using CentOS, so it should work. And on top of that, I can't do anything unless I register an account. So moving on, I did register an account and try to play around with it. Still couldn't get anything to work, so I just gave up. I mean, if you guys use ClearOS before as a router, shed some light. I, I really don't know how to use that thing. If I found it harder than IP Fire. Last but not least, I tried to use Endian, and now Endian was one of my earlier favorites firewall because it's easy on the eyes, it's easy to configure, it just works. But unfortunately, like I said earlier, this only supports UEFI, which knocks a lot of the firewall operating systems out of the list because a lot of them only supports legacy BIOS. So keep that in mind when you're trying to 
get this guy to work. Google, if your favorite firewall only could work on legacy BIOS instead of UEFI before you purchase this guy to install that in. All I could tell you right now is I am loving using IP Fire on this guy and I'm using it as my house network right now. And I was a little afraid to actually disconnect this for now just to make this video because I was having this guy dialed down so much that I didn't want to remove it from the wall. So anyway, I hope you guys found this video interesting. If you guys did, please hit that like button. If you guys have any firewall operating systems that you want me to test on this, let me know because I'm probably missing a whole bunch. So yeah, leave it down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.